Welcome, this is the second video travel interview series for TheExpeditioner.com. I'm your host, Matt Stabile. I'm the founder and editor-in-chief of TheExpeditioner.com. Today, I have with me my managing editor, Luke Armstrong. Um, quick business, if you want to follow along, get some more information, check out our Twitter feed, at The Expeditioner. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, The Expeditioner, for uh, updates and new travel video interviews. Uh, we still don't have a name, so be sure to leave some in the comments, some suggestions. Um, I worked on a few a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is my new list. They're probably all equally as bad, but uh, we can see. I I've got Regis and Matt. Got to get uh, Regis filled in out of retirement. Sure but come out for this. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. nice couch. Yeah, exactly. Um, the Chronicles of Matt, kind of like epic, like Vin Diesel style. I'll start to wear like <laughs> more muscle shirts. Uh, Lord of the Travelers, like very epic style, despite the fact that we're in front of a, uh, you know, Pier One mirror and stuff. <laughs> um, Game of Travels, like once again, like you're really reading a lot of fantasy adventure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, someone dies at at the end of every episode. Okay. That's what's gonna happen. Um, probably can't do that one. Travel Wars. I don't know. I just like Star Wars. So. <laughs> um, Anyways, I have with me today Luke Armstrong. As I mentioned, he's our managing editor for The Expeditioner. He also spent a lot of time in Guatemala. I visited him there about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, what were you doing there, Luke, and uh, was it legal? Um, most of what I was doing was legal. What I was doing professionally was legal. We don't, <laughs> this, this, there's a time for the other stuff, um, which is not now. Um, so I, I was originally just going to pass through for about two weeks. I finished my undergrads in Chile, and I was traveling overland. My Cool, I guess. I think I ran into the wild at the time, so I was like, oh, I'll just hitchhike from Chile to Alaska because that turned out well for this guy <laughs> <laughs> in, in this book. Yeah. I, I, would, I would kind of have to yin up my yang. There's was, there was a decent amount of debauchery along the way, so I would volunteer. Um, and one of the charities I was planning on volunteering for a couple weeks, there was an opportunity for me to take over the directorship, um, so I said yes to that, and four years later, I I finally got myself out of the country, um, but I guess old habits die hard. I'm, I'm returning in about a month for about three months. Nice. So you're executive director slash BFD, right? Um, BFD, I don't know. What does that mean? Oh, you have to go to Urban Dictionary. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I visited you about a year and a half ago in Guatemala and had an awesome time. It's not a country that um, is on a lot of people's radars, but it's on the radar for like a certain type of traveler. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and there's some really, really cool things to do there. So. You spent a lot of time there four years, so what are, what are some of your tips as like things to see and do in Guatemala? Yeah, if you're there for like two weeks, there's four, these are, this is kind of, was your itinerary in the country, but you have to see Antigua, um, definitely like three or four days in Antigua. It's this beautiful colonial city that was preserved. It used to be the capital of greater Guatemala, yeah. which included not just Guatemala, but parts of Mexico, Belize, I think El Salvador, Honduras. Um, and then you have the lake, Lake Atiglong, which yeah. is, we did, it was like a three hour road trip from Antigua. Yeah, Ellis Huxley called it the most beautiful lake on earth and I haven't really seen a counterpoint by another lake, which proves that wrong. We also have um, these Mayan runes to call, which are absolutely beautiful from Star Wars. That's um, right. Yavin 4. That's about eight hours north of there, almost on the border of Belize. Yep, yep. And then near there you have Samuk Champe, which is this um, beautiful cave structure, springs. Um, it's like this beautiful paradise, Eden. Um, type place, which you also yeah, visit. that was cool. So when we went, you kind of like hike over this giant ridge, and then there's like these limestone pools, and we kind of just like swam with a bunch of other backpackers around mm -hmm. there and jumped off down. bridges, you know. Yeah, you got nosebleeds. Yeah, yeah, all good things. So on that same vein, you're running a charity there, and you're kind of continu continuing the same type of work now. So can you tell you tell me about your new uh, endeavor? Yeah. So. The, the charity I was running, and a lot of charities, they're based on like a missionary model, which is basically, it, it was designed initially to convert people to a certain religion, so eliminating poverty, disease, health, while a lot of charities and religious charities, missionary charities over the years, have done those things, that wasn't their primary focus. Right. It was like kind of an afterthought to the religion part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and one drawback with that is the people that are in charge are not the people, are not leaders within the country. But the, the model I'm working on developing, our, our foundation is going to be called the What We Can Foundation, really emphasizing all of us can do something. We can have our normal lives on the side, be it if you're working in a library or if you're a travel writer, you know, whatever. And you can also do something or support something that's really um, helping people in a sustainable 
way that's not at all artificial, it's not just like um, smoke and mirrors. The solution that we're working on is getting a volunteer oversight body within these countries. So like for instance, there's a charity in Uganda. This guy wouldn't call it a charity, doesn't have a website, but he's taking kids out of garbage cans in the red light district. The kids that have literally just been thrown away and raising them. So if we could get him several more thousand dollars a year, he could take on more kids, provide better services for them. And then I've networked with like the Danish embassy, with um, workers at hostels there, expats that have been there two, three, you know, four years. And they're willing to provide the oversight of the finances that we're providing in order for them to increase the amount of assistance they're able to provide to people in need. So we're hoping that model will not only be successful, but also that more people will kind of look to this model because it's a really empowering model for citizens and people within the country rather than being like, oh, we're the people from the West, we're here to help you, this is what we're gonna do. Yeah, I love it, it's great. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what happens with it. Uh, Luke, thanks for coming in, Yeah. Peace bump. Let's go barbecue. Let's Have go some barbecue. Fun. Sounds good. Thanks for watching. Once again, uh, for Twitter updates, go to at the Expeditioner and be sure to subscribe to the YouTube page. Once again, this is Matt Stabile. Thanks for watching. Oh, oh.